Hello, my friends, and welcome to Switchbox Studio. I'm your host, Deadeye Dave, and today we'll be talking about the Lightwave V2, a surprisingly unique linear designed by Velocifier. This switch was manufactured by King Keyboard with custom tooling supplied by Gatoron. It's a 5-pin PCB mount switch with 4 millimeters of full travel. Now the website claims a normal actuation height of 2 millimeters, but in practice this is a speed switch, actuating quite soon after the start, perhaps around 1 millimeter. It has a polycarbonate housing and a palm stem. It also has a 60 grams gold-plated spring, which further breaks down to 35 grams to get the switch moving, 45 grams to actuate it, and 65 to bottom out. During the group and extras buys, these were 55 cents a piece. Outside of that, I haven't seen them offered under this name, but they are available under another. More on that later. Law and trivia. This switch is inspired by, but not affiliated with, the GMK Waves keyset. According to the Velocifier rep in the original interest check post, this switch has custom molds for every plastic part, utilizing extra precise production methods and mirror polishing for enhanced smoothness of the final product. It almost sounds too fancy for a company whose products you can find in Walmart, and who for the record made the worst MX compatible keyboard I've ever used but the claim bears out in how unusually smooth this switch is straight out of the bag. Molds custom made by Gatoron, but manufactured by King Keyboard. Nope, I've never heard of them either. I didn't look too deeply, but the only references to them I found were from this switch and its prior version. Speculation. Perhaps KK is the new manufacturing arm of Velocifier, which appears to be expanding globally. Their official headquarters are in Chino, California, but the rep on the forums, who I also assume writes the English marketing materials, does not appear to be a native English speaker. The quirk. Not mentioned in the interest check or product description, or even clearly depicted in any of the official photos, is the feature that interested me enough to jump on the last 70 extras Bolsa had on hand. So what is it? No, not this absurdly lured spring. This thing. A very unusual stem. How curious. The most obvious bit is the pair of pliant legs on either side, acting as dampeners. In addition to those, however, is also the wide, flat top surface of the otherwise short rail sections. To complement the weird stem, the inside of the bottom housing is specially shaped to interact with the pliant legs and compress them almost all the way before the center pole and contact legs bottom out themselves. Unlike other MX dampeners, this one isn't made of softer material and doesn't require extra parts or extra complicated injection molding. Round one. Here you can see the Lightwave V2 stem compared with a Gazoo Silent Linear on the left and an Ink Black on the right. Side by side, it's easy to see how unusual the points of contact for this stem really are. For this reason, the less obviously but equally unique Lightwave V2 housing plays oddly with other stems. The Lightwave V2 stem, while quite smooth in many other housings, loses the benefit of its dampening legs and instead bottoms out on the contact legs or center pole, depending on the housing. Performance. So how is it really? It's weird, but is it good? Short answer, yes. If you just want something really smooth, these are a great bet. You can hear that butt coming, can't you? It's the sound. While these are lubed from the factory, have excellent fitment between the two housing parts, and are hella smooth, they are not hella refined. Out of the bag, the stem is rattly, and the springs have a sound that reminds me of a slinky rolling downstairs. No wonder, too, that big long spring is already quite compressed when the switch is open. If you look closely, you might be able to see it trying to buckle, only prevented by the center tube and the stem holding it in place. Not only does that make the spring want to carry vibrations, it also makes it brush against the top of the tube. These are some noisy, if not loud, switches. 
even more than most, these really come alive when you lube them, but maybe for different reasons than usual. I tested individual switches with Crytox 205 grade 0 and 106 and decided to go with the oil. While the smoothness itself only saw slight improvement from its already admirable position, the sound improved significantly. Gone is the raspy, slinky sound, and gone is the rattle of the stem against the polycarbonate housings. In its place, a luscious, plocky sound. This lovely sound owes its character in part to the lube, but as much to the unusual stem shape. The pliant legs on the bottom make for a softer, yet still crisp bottom out, both in sound and feel. The broad top surfaces of the rails that strike equally broad surfaces on the top housing make for a louder, sharper sound than the bottom out. Pair that with some case dampening and some tall ABS keycaps, and you'll get a sound like this. Conclusions. As much as I love the sound and smooth feel of these switches for typing, I find them hard to recommend for that purpose. Despite what the spec sheet says, these activate very early and are very easy for me to actuate unintentionally. By the same token, however, I think these would make an ideal gaming switch. The fast activation has potential value there, and so does the style of dampening. It takes the edge off bottoming out without sacrificing a crisp, definitive feel like the softer mechanisms of silent switches tend to do. I can easily recommend this as a gaming switch to just about anyone, and for those of you who are both light and accurate typists, this could be a very satisfying daily driver as well. While I think I'm going to stay away from numerical scores for these overviews, I do want to cover the topics of quality and value. Purely in terms of quality, I'd call these very good, with the heavy asterisk that they will sound pretty rough until you take the time to lube them. If you don't mind to, or are already planning to lube your switches, these might be an attractive option. Factoring in the 55 cent price, I think these have a very fair value with plenty of tuning potential. While they lack the out-of-the-box refinement that some of the pre-lubed JWK linears or higher-end Gateron-made offerings possess, they absolutely compete on smoothness, and for that price, I think that makes them a surprisingly solid offering from the team responsible for the one mechanical keyboard I wouldn't choose over a typical pack-in rubber dingus. For that, I have to give Veloc Fire the biggest improvement award, and a bit more of my attention moving forward. And now, some individual tests and full typing demonstrations of the switches before and after lubing.
Addendum, Candy Jade Green. If you're interested in obtaining some of these switches, Candy Jade Green is the name you're most likely to find them under now. Until recently, I only knew these switches by the name I use here, but it looks like Candy Jade Green is the more common moniker globally, and the one you're more likely to find in stock. By all accounts, these appear to be identical in every way, save for the addition of a nameplate and perhaps the inclusion of a poorly QC'd sample in the photos. Candy is another out-of-nowhere manufacturing name, which I'm assuming is another DBA of Velocifier or one of its close partners, but again, that's just speculation. Thank you all very much for watching, and remember, be kind to your fellow lifeforms, and to yourself as well, and of course, Happy clacking.